Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children 18 plus. You are tuned in to the Loan Officer Podcast with me, Dustin Owen, and my main man, JC. John Coleman. Dio, what is popping today? The parties in the streets in Argentina. <clears throat> Shout out to FIFA, man. Right. At wow. They did something right by chance. I watch probably two or three soccer matches a decade. That's all you need to. And that was one that I got to turn on in mm-hmm. the 70th minute. Yep. France was down 2-0. Mm-hmm. They come back. Mbappe, is that his name? Mbappe. Mbappe yep. crushes it with two goals in a minute and a half. It goes into overtime. Then it goes into double overtime. Then it goes into penalty kicks. Plus, they had this thing called extra time. Yeah. Wow. That's Just, pretty exciting. And yeah. I guess now Messi is the goat, and it's not Ronaldo. I don't know, man. That's who cares. You watched it, didn't you? I did. Yeah, <clears throat> that's it. By the way, you know FIFA's a big deal. Yeah. When someone like John Coleman a turns on a TV yeah. that's not for video games. <laughs> yeah. And then B watches a sporting event. Yeah. When was the last sporting event you watched? Can you remember? No, like no, I watched like I'll dabble in like Red Zone. Like, I'll see it on TV and just have it on in, like, background noise and shit. But okay. the Sunday before, like, last last Sunday, didn't turn on a game at all. Yeah. Forgot there were sports on. Yeah, no, it was an exciting week for for sports. You get some of the crappy uh, college American mm-hmm. football bowl games are going on right now. Like, right. the Florida Gators got schlacked. Did they? They got schlacked. Yo, how do these teams with losing records go to a bowl game? It's all marketing and bullshit. I think you have to have at least six wins to be eligible. But like, you can have six wins QB and more six losses. And seven. Yeah. But anyhow, it, yeah. it is a racket. It's all about the money. You used to only play 10 games, then it was 12. Now it's 13 because really? more, more games is more revenue. Are there a lot of attorneys and legal, legalities involved? Tons of attorneys. Okay. Tons of attorneys, especially more attorneys now because of the name and likeness. Yeah. Right? You get NIL, so now all of a sudden you have all of these college football players who <clears throat> didn't necessarily need representation. Oh, yeah. Now they need representation. Yeah, of course. Some people are doing it with a law degree. Other people are doing it. Just because they have a background in sports marketing, yeah. or maybe they are a former player themselves. There you go. Yeah, I I, I see we're going with this. You're wanting to do a little quick segue. Nah, you know a little something. Yeah, well, we can jump right into it. Like, who cares about the college football, NFL football playoff implications, or the fact that Do got his rear end handed to him in fantasy because of one shitty football team from Tampa named Yes Chris Smith, Tampa Brady. Yes John Uch, he Yes Dwayne can't Hutto. Can't even hold on to the football to hand it off. That's where we've come with TB12. All I needed, all I needed was for Joe Burrow to have a good game, not a great game. I was playing against him. The new Tom Brady. And the new Tom Brady mm-hmm. and the the Tampa Bay Buccaneers turned the ball over 5 times in the second half, all on the wrong side of the 50. Right. which allows a quarterback to only have to go 25 to 35 yards to score a touchdown instead of typically the 75 yards they have to go. Mm-hmm. And Joe Burrow, four TDs, puts up like 35 fantasy points. And now going into Monday Night Football, I need a freaking Christmas miracle. But that's for a different show, a different topic. Right. Maybe when Jamie Eisenberg has me on his podcast, okay, then we can talk fantasy okay. football. Right now, we're talking, <laughs> we're talking everything you should learn in high school oh but God. didn't. We are talking business. We are talking sales. Mm-hmm. We are talking marketing. Yeah. And more specifically, how can I, as a business professional, as a financial sales professional, mm-hmm. how can I elicit referral sources from attorneys? Yeah. Because that is a referral source that, if done right, could be very lucrative for many sales professionals, not just mortgage loan originators. Right? We know we call the show the Loan Officer Podcast, but we call it that not because it's a show for loan officers, because we wholeheartedly believe that everyone needs a really good loan officer in their back pocket. Because loan officers know a thing or two about a bunch of things, Mm -hmm. and loan officers know people. So because of that, when we get on these two mics, those three cameras, these two lights, and we talk, it's typically conversations that you or I have had, either while coaching loan officers, speaking with home buyers, or dealing with the smorgasbord of community people, Mm -hmm. people within our community that reach out to us because they have a question regarding real estate, regarding credit, regarding personal finance, insert request here, right? So I figured, you know what, it's the holidays and we need to crank out a bunch of episodes so JC can use some of his PTO and we need to create some content. Mm -hmm. What's some content that we can make a little bit more 
bite size, mm-hmm. and let's crank out a few of these episodes. Okay. And it also fulfills some viewer requests, which is, hey, talk less, get to the point, and make these things shorter. Yeah. Not everyone has a 45-minute drive to the office. Some right. of it's only 25 minutes. So that's what today's going to be. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to speak, yes, to mortgage loan originators, but also to real estate agents, mm-hmm. also to CPAs, also to financial advisors, or anyone else who thinks that they could benefit from building referral relationships with attorneys. Okay. And I picked three attorneys because as a former mortgage loan originator, as someone who runs a large retail mortgage operation and who coaches managers as well as originators, these are things that I'm coaching them. As someone who would coach a realtor or a broker owner of a real estate agency, this is what I'd be coaching them. When and if I'm coaching financial advisors, this is some of the advice I'd be giving them, right? So that's what uh, today's motivation is stemming from. It's stemming from previous conversations we've had with expanding our referral network. Okay. All right. So if I am any one of those professions, insert name here, Mm -hmm. and I was looking at ways that I could build and grow my network in order to increase my leads, because I've learned that more leads tend to lead to more sales. Mm -hmm then what are three attorney groups that I'd be targeting? Do you have any, any guess? If you were a mortgage loan originator and you start thinking about, okay, where could an attorney come into, come into play in terms of being a referral source? Not an attorney because I have a contractual dispute with my employer, right. not an attorney because I'm being uh, sued over a non-compete, not an attorney because I have to defend myself against mm-hmm. a fraud allocation. Mm-hmm. Those are not the attorneys we want to be talking to or right. talking about because that means something went sideways in our world. Mm-hmm. But if I'm a sales professional, I'm trying to build a, a business relationship where I can offer my services to their clients, mm-hmm. then do, do you have a guess? I do. Okay, what's your guess, uh, John? Maybe let's go with um, divorce attorneys. Divorce attorneys are fantastic. Now, I will tell you this. They prefer to be called family law attorneys. Sure. Divorce attorneys. Okay. (laughs) Potato, potato. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure there's some that don't mind, but Mm -hmm. then there's others that that do. Right. Right? Like my son calls fraternities frats. Mm -hmm. Well, when I went to college and for those three days that I had rushed to fraternity and I tried to use the word frat, Mm -hmm. I was chastised and they said, do you call your country a and leave off the tree? And I said, no. That's a stretch. Then why would you call your fraternity a frat? So, hey, nonetheless, <laughs> okay. right. divorce attorneys, <laughs> right. family law attorneys. Yes, what a fantastic way to offer your services, right? Because here's something you need to know about attorneys in general. They're smart, they are formally educated, and they are proud. But they're not mortgage professionals. They're not real estate professionals. They're not financial advisors, and they're not CPAs. Even if they were licensed, like think about this. Even if they're licensed, well, I have my mortgage broker's license. I'm like, cool, but do you practice? I mean, my daughter is going to be 15 next month, and she's going to get her driver's license. Oh, shit. Does that mean she's any good at driving? Not yet. No. No. Even after she, she has a, her learners and then she turns 16, is she any good at driving? No. Ask grown, ask grown people in Florida that Yeah, question. she she won't be any good at driving until she drives for three to five years. Yeah. Okay? So just because someone has their license to sell real estate or their license to originate loans doesn't mean they're any good at it. So that family law attorney is going to be asked questions. Wouldn't it be nice for them and questions they don't know the answer to. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a local mortgage loan originator who they could rely on to answer those questions or a local realtor. So I think family law attorneys is a fantastic way to you start like any other relationship. How can I help you? What is it? And, and it may be dude, can you just meet with me once a month for the next three months so I can pick your brain? Because these are the questions that I typically get and I don't have answers to. Eventually, it would be like, hey, dude, instead of me trying to answer the questions based on everything that you taught me, could I just have my people call you? I'm like, yes. And then in return, I'm sure as the relationship grows, we as loan officers, I've done this throughout my entire career, I will have to sit down and tell someone, hey, by the way, I am not an attorney but the questions you're asking sounds like you should speak to an attorney first. And then I can say whether you're, you go through the, with the divorce, you just need mediation or you need representation, mm-hmm. do you have someone you could call? Because I will get questions where people will call me, hey, I'm separating from my spouse, mm-hmm. but I want to go buy a house. And I'm like, 
You heard it. Mm -hmm. Deep breath, take a step back. Have you spoken with your attorney? And they're usually like, we're not going to use an attorney. We're going to do a mediator. I'm like, okay, look, I'm not an attorney, but I do know there's definite laws as mm -hmm. it pertains to buying primary homes. It varies from state to state. So there could be a reciprocal relationship between me and a family law attorney. But here's why I love family law attorneys is that eventually two people who share one house are going to get divorced. Mm -hmm. And eventually one of those people may have to refinance the other person off the mortgage. They may have to pull equity out of the current home in order to properly divide assets. And they, in a perfect world, may want to sell the house, too many bad memories, and mm. each go buy their own place. There are multiple transactions with every divorce situation. Assuming they didn't wreck each other's credit at a spike, because I see that happen a lot of time in divorce situations. But that's where an attorney who had a good loan officer in their back pocket could potentially prevent that from happening. Like, they're like, hey, look, I had this loan officer who is fantastic at what she does, and she is right down the road from me. And something she has taught me is, although you're really mad at him, not paying the mortgage hurts you more than it hurts him. Mm -hmm. Right? So these are the type, types of conversations. But if I am a mortgage loan originator, CPA, or a real estate agent, or maybe even a financial advisor, then something that I'm going to want to do is make it part of my 2023 business plan to consistently reach out to network with family law attorneys. I'm probably going to have to go out and meet with six to eight of them in order to find my two or three. And then while I'm there, I'm there to interview them to figure out what does a divorce attorney really do or family law attorney? What are some ways that I could refer them? And then more importantly, educate them on the mortgage and the home buying and home selling process, as well as let them know that my services are readily available. Nice. Yeah, but it's like anything. You can't just like willy-nilly it and sporadically do it, right? You either do it or you don't do it. Is this something where you just like kind of pick up the phone and call the office and be like, hey, type yes. like a similar script like when calling on realtors or is it yes. a little bit different? Okay. Yeah, ready? I mean, you have, to, you have to find your reason to call. Obviously, if I'm going to call any attorney, I'm going to reach out to my current network mm -hmm. and, and let them know what I'm trying to do. Hey, my 2023 business plan actually calls for me mm -hmm. to start – building a relationship with local attorneys. Here's what I realized, and this is a good problem to have. I don't know any attorneys. That means I've never needed one. That's a good problem to have. But if I need to change that, ma'am or sir, like I'm reaching out to my referral network, anyone who I send Christmas cards to, past clients, current real estate agents that, that refer me, do you know of a good family law attorney that, that I could look to network with? And then when I get those names, mm -hmm. I now pick up the phone or I slide into their DMs or I follow, I connect with them on LinkedIn, however you want to do it. But I literally will just send them a message. Hey, you and I don't know each other. My name is Dustin. I am a local lender. I am looking to build a referral relationship with one or two solid family law attorneys. My goal with reaching out was to schedule a time for us to meet in person or to do a Zoom call. I would love to learn more about being a family law attorney and how I could bring value to your business. Like it's that simple. And these people aren't being called on by mortgage professionals the way that realtors and builders are. So it may be a lot easier to slide into their LinkedIn, mm -hmm. especially if you're calling them because like if I wanted to call Dan Morgan right now at Morgan & Morgan, I know you and Dan are friends. I would just say, hey, JC, do you mind if I call Dan? And you may be like, uh, I don't know. It's kind of like a personal relationship. I'm like, all right, cool. Two days later, I pick up the phone and I'd call Dan. <laughs> right. I'm like, hey, Dan, I was hanging out with a mutual friend of ours two days ago, and he just couldn't talk about what an awesome dude you were. So I had to pick up the phone to introduce myself. You and I don't know each other, but we do know JC. And the reason why I'm reaching out is because I'm great at what I do. I hear from him that you're great at what you do. I have clients that need that that need family law attorneys. I'm assuming he is one. I have no idea what type of attorney he is, but and I'm assuming you have clients that have mortgage questions. My goal with connecting is so that I know how to best refer you to my clients and I also I want to make myself a, a valuable source of information for you and your clients. Like that's the type of script right. that we're going with. Mm -hmm. It's doing it with intention. That's where people fail.
you got to stick to it, right? You have to say on top of dominating my, my lead follow-up on top of dominating my, um, realtor campaigns and my builder campaigns on top of doing my Tuesday status update calls on top of all the other sales activity. I'm gonna pick one thing and I'm going to dedicate this quarter. It's almost like the, we have theme days. Like what do you do on Monday? What do we do on Tuesday? You could also have themes of the quarter, mm -hmm. right? First quarter is I want to build out a referral network of, of divorce, uh, family law attorneys. Second quarter, maybe I want to build out a network of financial advisors. Third quarter, it may be, I want to build out a network of, and this is going to be our next attorney group, immigration attorneys. Mm. How many people have thought about networking with immigration attorneys? And I'm not talking immigration attorneys necessarily for someone who's seeking political asylum per se. There are enough immigration attorneys in every major market who are helping well established business professionals who are seeking employment in the US. I'm talking um, Siemens, which is a large energy company out of Germany who has large presence in, I believe, Pennsylvania, as well as in Florida. Mm -hmm. They have German nationals who are moving to the US who are not US citizens. They do not have a green card and they might not even have a visa yet. They may be here on a work permit and they're not established, but these are people who are accustomed to a certain lifestyle. They make really good money, regardless if it's in the Euro or in, in the dollar and are accustomed to owning a home. Right now, a immigration attorney may very well be telling those people, unfortunately, here's what you have to do. You have to rent for two years. You have to establish your U S mm -hmm. credit. You have to establish your U S banking. You have to get some form of a, uh, resident alien status. And then after two years, you can apply for a loan. Whereas a mortgage loan originator, like our buddy, Kevin Murphy. And I know he has, cause he's done this. Kevin as a mortgage loan originator has a funding resource that would consider that person an expatriate hmm. or expat. Someone who is coming in from a, from a different country to live here and legally work here and they can fund a loan for that person. What I love about those types of loans is it's what I call a twofer. So this is very specific to mortgage professionals. Now, it also resonates mm -hmm. with all the other groups because these professionals will need potentially a financial advisor and they will need someone to potentially help them with their, with their taxes, right? So like a CPA could still benefit from this as well as a, a financial advisor and sure as heck a realtor could. Mm -hmm. But if you're a mortgage loan originator and you're calling on a immigration attorney, the loan that you do for that, for that expatriate, and it's called an expatriate loan. So you can Google it. You can look for your own funding sources, but there are specific wholesale investors in the market who offer these types of loans. It's not a true foreign national loan, a foreign national loan for my loan officers and my realtors. That is a loan for someone who is not going to be living in the U S right? Like I live in Argentina. I want to own a beach condo in Miami. Uh, okay. I work in Argentina. Gotcha. I want to own a beach condo in, in Miami that I come to for four weeks out of the year. Yeah. That is a foreign national. I'm talking about expatriate. It's like, no, no, no. I'm going to be living in the U S no, no, no. My job is in the U S think Canadians. Mm -hmm. You worked at EA sports. Yeah. We have it all the time. Yeah. Developers yes. and programmers. Ah, it's funny you said that. Yeah. yeah. You worked at EA sports. There's yeah. a ton of Canadians. Yeah moving to Orlando, working yeah. for EA Sports. Yeah. Think about Amazon yeah. and Google with Canadians, yeah. right? Being so close to the border, but they're gonna come over from Vancouver yeah. and they're gonna live in Seattle or they're gonna live in, yeah. in Silicon Valley. That's a great point. Right? Mm -hmm. Austin, Texas probably has yeah. it. And then you start thinking about so many of the other, whether it's biomedical, whether it's manufacturing, what about petroleum, right? How many people may be coming from the Middle East mm -hmm. to work in the US because they have some kind of a geology type type background mm -hmm. where they know how to drill for oil or na or, or gas pipelines. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it resonates. That is called an expatriate loan and a immigration attorney would be a fantastic referral source. And by the way, you're bringing value to that person, right? You're teaching them a, a way to yes. They may have thought the answer was no for their clients to, 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 mm. and it may be easier by the way, for them to do their job. If their person has established permanent residency by buying a home. 
right? That may make it easier. I don't know. I'm not the one who's being tasked with going out there and meeting with six to 12 immigration attorneys between now and March 31st. But if you're listening to this and it resonates with you, that's your challenge. And then you all figure out how you best bring value. What I'm trying to do is open up your, your eyes to these opportunities. Mm. All right. So we have one more type of attorney. Right. You want me to give it to you? Yeah. All right. I'll give it to no, you. No, no. Yeah, because I have yeah, a question. Yeah, you're, you're, you're looking for an attorney that specializes in the formation of doing like wills and trust, which is what we call an estate attorney, right? An attorney who typically manages the estates of others, right? So let's say I am Dustin Owen and I am married and I have two children. And my wife and I each have life insurance on, on both of us. And we've been able to save a little bit of cash over the past 15, 20 years. And if we die tomorrow, who gets our shit and when do they get it? Well, if I don't do anything, it literally goes to my next of kin who is 18. That's it. That's it. Like if I didn't do anything, right. that's what they're going to look for. And it's going to have to go through this legal process called probate and probate can be expensive or... If I'm responsible, I can say, you know, what? I want to sit down with an attorney and I want to draft a will. And I also want to have like an estate plan, right? Because a will says, leave this to this person. But an estate plan can take it one step further. And instead of my children each getting their half of all of our crap, it may state, well, Jackson gets this much at 26. He gets this much at 36 and Kendall the same thing. And it's um, a little bit of a more formalized process. Maybe I put it all into a family trust and now it's not owned in, in my individual names. And there's legal benefits. There's tax benefits to, to having things in an estate. And that's what an estate attorney does. How do I protect you, your heirs and your assets? Mm -hmm. That's what they're trying to do and, and reduce your liability to things like lawsuits. Well, those people have clients who pass away. In fact, they're in business because they're planning for their clients to pass away and they're helping their client while they're still alive and on this earth to prepare to as smoothly as possible, pass down their, their, um, their assets, their mm -hmm. estate, mm -hmm. all of their belongings, all of their possessions. So networking with an estate attorney very well means the family just inherited these properties. And they don't want them. Okay. If I'm a realtor, raise my hand. I would love to help them sell those homes. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. It may be they inherited these homes and this cousin wants the house, but he has to buy out the rest of the cousins. Mm. At which point there needs to be a mortgage involved. If I'm a lender, hey, I'm going to raise my hand. How can I help you through this process? Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Yes. And they typically need a lender who maybe has compassion, who maybe has patience mm. because you're working sometimes during an emotional standpoint. Sometimes the, the you know, three cousins hated granddaddy, right? Two of them loved him. Mm -hmm. And then everyone thought about the, the sixth cousin who they haven't seen in 20 years. Well, all of a sudden when there's money, then homegirl shows up yeah, and right. she wants her cut. Yeah. Right. But like these are all, and, and you have to, View yourself as you are a professional who adds value. You're not just there with your hand out, right? That's, that's a grubby money whore. You're there to ask these attorneys, how can I bring value to you and your clients? Where are you struggling? What questions do you normally get that I could answer for you or I could equip you with the proper answers? And then in return, yes, when something pops off, please give me a call. I'd be more than happy to work with you and your clients to help them transition to whatever it is that they're trying to accomplish whether it's the divorced couple that needs to sell a house and go buy two homes, whether it's the expatriate who's moving down here from Canada or they're moving up here from Venezuela mm -hmm. because they're working in oil. That's why I did Venezuela. Mm -hmm. um, or they're coming over from the UK or from Australia, right, et cetera, et cetera. Or it could be the person who think of all the reasons why you would acquire property through the death of someone else. Mm -hmm. And we as lenders also have a great opportunity to refer our clients to a, to an estate planning attorney, especially our more affluent 
right? That could be something we could give as solid sound advice to our clients. Hey, look, you may not have thought about this, but I have other clients who are doing as well as you're doing, and they have a estate attorney mm -hmm. who has helped them with X, Y, and Z. Question for you from the listener that has the same exact question. What would you say about trying to market to um, traffic attorneys and people who do with like injury and stuff like that? Do you want to avoid that? Yes. That yeah, it's like at some point, I need to look at what's the highest and best use of my time mm -hmm. and who's going to give me the best opportunity to refer me the right type of client. And you know, someone who's, who's going to, to traffic clinics and calling personal injury attorneys, um, yeah, that's, that's not my forte, right? Especially a personal injury attorney because as a mortgage lender, it may be very hard to qualify that person, right? Yeah, the, yes, they may get a nice settlement, but if they're now currently disabled and they don't have income, how am I going to get them qualified? Yeah, I would just stay away from that for a multitude of reasons. And I'm just going to try to take the high road and and not tell you what they are. I'll let you guess. Right. But when I look at my ideal client, I tend to find them more coming from the, the requirement of a divorce attorney. Right. Like think about this. Someone who typically wouldn't value homeownership or wouldn't wouldn't deem homeownership to be in their cards probably also doesn't have a divorce attorney, right? They're probably utilizing mediation or they're doing it themselves. So like, I, I like that because there's a, a typical, you know, income credit professionalism aspect that comes along with it. You know, with, with the immigration attorney, there are certain things I can definitely help them with, mm -hmm. but not all of their clients because a lot of their clients um, are just trying to stay in the United States legally. Right. Home ownership is not even a thought at this point. Yeah. Right. Like getting political asylum mm -hmm. is is their only concern. Getting the rest of their family over here is, is their only concern. So, yes, to answer your question, I would stick with those three. Like, that's why we did this episode and we just picked three, because if you're able to do that, let's say you're truly able to get six, six and six. You have six meetings with each type. That means you had 18 meetings with attorneys of which you'll probably end up with one or two that are consistent referral sources for you. At which point, if you play your cards right, you could essentially receive six referrals a month from attorneys, whereas last year you were receiving zero. And those six referrals could easily lead to two closings, which that's two incremental closings in what you had last year. On top of things you're already doing, marketing to your past client database and doing your annual client reviews and you know your normal marketing activities, I'd stick to those three. Right. Cool? Well said. Awesome. Hey, y'all, thanks for tuning in. This was a fun episode. I think we're going to lay down one more quickie like this, yeah. if we can. Mm -hmm. um, check out the website. If you have not done so already, the website is theloanofficerpodcast.com. If that's too much for you to type, we made it easy. tloponline.com, T-L-O-P, online.com. We have a ton of additional content. Mad videos. Crazy amounts of training videos, <laughs> links to awesome publications. We have mm -hmm. tools, we have trackers, we have spreadsheets, mm -hmm. we have PDF files. Like we got upcoming events too. Check that upcoming out. Upcoming events. It looks great, by the oh, way. Thank you. Yeah. I meant to tell you before we, oh, we yeah. kicked off today's recording that I was on TLOP online because we have a community message board that I monitor yeah. and I contribute. So I was on to monitor the community message board and I was contributing. And I also noticed on the homepage, you've put up our next three. Big speaking It's going to be a right? busy uh, 2023 for you and your boy. Well, think about it. If, if it's January and we're already speaking at an event in Tampa, an event in Orlando, and we're doing a virtual event for the University of Central Florida. Kicking the, kicking the year off right, I would say. And that's uh, and going out to Texas. Damn. And going out to Texas. So, Don't forget about me when you blow up, man. Uh, I got to drag you along with me, <laughs> homie. I can't do this all by yeah, myself. Until, until somebody shows up with a fancier camera. You think so? And then you'll be like, oh, who's this kid? The thing about it is they won't have your smile. I know they won't. They won't have your no, smile, JC. Okay. But no, check out the website. Continue to like us, follow us, share yeah. us, comment. Oh, by the way, check out my article on Housing Wire. Yes. Shout out to my friends over at Housing Shout Wire. Shout out Dustin. Being yes. Published author for Housing Wire. Yes. Yeah. They, they published an article I wrote last week. I hope to make that a consistent thing in 2023. I'd love to have one article a month there you that's go. published in Housing Wire. So we have our links to Housing Wire already on the website. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, 
Check us out, share us, like us, give us a five-star review. That is all the time we have for you today, but we will catch you on the next episode. His name is John Coleman. I'm Dustin Owen, and we're out. Peace.